Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled Managing Complex Cases in Orthodontics. This was a conversation and dynamic lecture by both Kleber Morales and Andre Machado, which I very much enjoyed listening to. So the two of them described cases and I'm going to focus on the key messages they gave about biomechanics in fixed appliances and also with aligners. Just a quick recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and it may not be 100% representative of the lecture, although we try our best to ensure that it is. Now back to the lecture. So they started off by describing fixed appliance biomechanics. And I love the conversation they had between each other, which was how if we understand the biomechanics of fixed appliances and the side effects of them, we can derive new and creative ways to individualize treatment for our patients. Also, our understanding of the side effects of our mechanics lets us counteract them, but also enhance them if it is so desirable. So they gave an example of canine retraction in a typical premolar extraction case where the canines are buccal. Now, conventionally with straight wire appliances, we would align that canine. It would result in a distal rotation. And then when it came to sliding mechanics, we'd have distal crown tipping taking place. However, if we apply our understanding of biomechanics to the scenario, we can achieve our ideal aims, which is essentially to align the canine, not to distally rotate it, but also to achieve bodily retraction. Now, we can achieve that through the use of sectional mechanics. Our mechanics are going to be loop mechanics, and we're gonna have the line of force buckle to where the rest of the teeth are. And this has a significant advantage. It means that the line of action is buckle, Therefore, the canine can't, cannot rotate distally. It also means when it comes to closing space using loop mechanics, we're able to allow the counter moment to increase. So as the crown starts to distally tip, it is then uprighted to achieve bodily retraction of the tooth. The outcome of these mechanics are we get no distal tipping taking place or distal rotation of the canine. And the second example they gave was the classic up in size of retraction for our premolar extraction cases. And they described how the loss of upper anterior torque is commonplace to occur, and it is due to the slop in the bracket arch wire interaction. And how, as we increase the direction of the force, it increases the rotational effects, and ultimately, this results in loss of upper anterior torque and small residual spaces that are really challenging to close. They showed an example of this occurring, and essentially that space is not going to close until we correct the torque first. So both Clara and Andre recommended stopping the active space closure mechanics to regain the upper anterior torque by buccal crown torque being placed into the arch wire, when recovered, then continuing the space closure. They next moved on to biomechanics and aligners, which is an interesting topic and one we're still finding out more about. It was great to get these experts giving their opinion. They started off with describing how physics is physics and there is no magic appliance. They then looked into some of the examples given on social media and described how in extraction cases, it is challenging to maintain talk with aligners and how some of the cases presented may not tell the truest story and how if we lose upper anterior torque, we are left with upper anterior residual spaces. And in the cases that they showed, they thought that actually lower in size that IPR had been carried out to try and close those spaces. But that may not have been ideal for the management of the tooth position of that case. They then went on to describe space closure with aligners and how it can be challenging to close individual tooth unit spaces. They gave the example of an upper premolar which had been removed. And actually what this case needed wasn't necessarily to do with the appliance, but was to do with anchorage. And the use of a temporary anchorage device was what was required to protract teeth a full unit forwards to close this particular space. They then went on to describe distalization with aligners. In their opinion, how it's not an effective way of using an aligner. And they described the mechanisms, why, and some of the biomechanics. And I wanted to recap this with you guys, because I thought it was an interesting conversation. So they described how aligners are able to achieve distal tipping, but the side effects of using aligners are that they can't achieve root movement predictably and reliably. But Kleber had a solution to this, and he described the use of attachments on the first molars as part of distalization, and how we can use biomechanics to advantage here. So he described a six millimeter attachment is what we want to have on a first molar when we distalize. 
He described some of the numbers and it's around 120 grams we want to use to distalize and it's around about 10 millimeters from the center of rotation. So in total it's around about uh, 1200 grams. Now the idea is that what we want to be able to achieve is the counter moment to this force, therefore achieving root uprighting. And therein is where the problem lies with aligners, as the material itself cannot deliver the force required to achieve this counter moment. What we are able to achieve when it comes to aligners and force delivery is closer to around about 60 grams as opposed to 120 that's needed for the force and counter force. Clever also exercised a word of caution. With attachments, sometimes we wish to go shorter with them. However, if we'd reduce the attachment size down to four millimeters, actually then we need to have 300 grams of force, which is even further away from what aligners can safely deliver. When it comes to tip control with aligners, Kleber gave a real good pearl when it came to this, and he described the use of horizontal attachments on first molars instead of vertical attachments. And this is great because it allows us to have a greater distance between two different attachments on the same tooth. Increasing the distance means we get greater moment that then takes place and better control. But both Kleber and Andre were keen to point out that there are issues with aligners and aligner planning specifically how we shouldn't be relying upon the manufacturing companies to do the treatment planning. They also described how artificial intelligence does not have knowledge of the roots and its angulation, which is difficult to correct even with conventional appliances, and the clinician should be steering this process. They described the materials of aligners and how they lack stiffness, and therefore to be able to apply the counter moment to the force is a real challenge for aligners to deliver. I'd like to thank the sponsors for enabling the work for Orthodontics and Summary Podcast to continue. And a quick update for me, it's been an exciting few weeks with the AAO, which I attended virtually. And we're looking forward to bringing you some of the topic summaries from the, from the meeting this year. I also hope you guys will be joining me in Porto, or at least online, for the Simply Ortho conference which is taking place. I'm excited to say I'll be hosting the online platform over the two days. It's a great lineup really focusing on clinical orthodontic practice and I'm excited to be part of the process. As always guys, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.